Evening and welcome along to Transfer Centre. They've already got the world's most expensive defender. And now Liverpool are ready to make Alisson the world's most expensive goalkeeper. Yes, indeed. The stunning move has gathered pace throughout the day. And Sky this week now has found that Jürgen Klopp is on the brink of getting his man. Full details for you in just a moment. Plus, we'll have an update on the talks between Aston Villa and Tottenham over a deal for Jack Grealish. And Jack Wilshire has left the Gunners, but can he help West Ham shoot up the table? An interview with their new signing on the way. Well, just one place to start, I think that is with today's major developments at Liverpool. Jurgen Klopp appears to be on the brink of stealing a stunning, record-breaking move for the Roma goalkeeper, Alisson. Our reporter, Aidan McGee, as you see, has joined us. Good evening to you, Aidan. Uh, wow, this one's moved along quite quickly today. Take us through the, the ins and outs of the deal. Yeah, very quickly indeed. I mean, it's basically all happened, as far as we understand, in the last 26, 24 to 36 hours. But yeah, in a nutshell, Jules, our colleagues, uh, Sky colleagues in Italy are reporting that Liverpool have now struck a deal with the Roma goalkeeper, uh, Alisson, to complete a £67 million deal, subject, of course, uh, to the completion of a uh, medical. Remember, we saw him at the World Cup, didn't we? They got to, he was in goal for Brazil as they got to the quarterfinals and were beaten by uh, Belgium. But he's agreed a five-year contract uh, at Anfield. Personal terms are all sorted. We're expecting him in the UK tomorrow. Uh, to complete formalities on that medical in the next uh, couple of days. But we should say at this stage that neither Roma or Liverpool are commenting. We've learned also in the last 24 hours that Chelsea saw Alisson as a realistic target if, as is eminently possible, Thibaut Courtois goes to Real Madrid. We know that uh, Madrid is his favourite destination. That's where his kids are. That's, of course, where he spent that successful time with Atletico four years ago when they got to the Champions League final. So uh, big work to do for the rest of the team to catch up. So £67 million for uh, Alisson, as it will be. Klopp's already brought in Cater this summer, Fabinho, Shakiri. What are their rivals going to be making of all this? Well, I imagine it's going to prick a few ears up, actually, because if you think about it, Manchester United and Tottenham are among a number of clubs who have yet to make a signing uh, as yet. And Liverpool seem to be avoiding the mistakes that should have been remedied last season. The goalkeeping position is a real point in question because, of course, it cost them so dearly in the Champions League final when they probably should have won or certainly fancied by a lot of people to win their sixth uh, Champions League. But those errors by Loris Karius cost them dearly in the final. So they've moved to take steps on that. And in addition to the names you reeled off there, and it was a considerable list, don't forget they spent £75 million pound on Southampton's Virgil van Dijk last summer. He looked particularly impressive. So as I say, it's a game of catch-up now because there's only three weeks to go and we've got plenty more to come on the Skypad just a short time from now, Jules. Mm. So we're waiting on Alisson then, all this being confirmed. Uh, Aidan's got his phone ready, so once we know anything more, we'll let, let you know. Alisson then on the brink of sealing this move to Anfield. Graham Souness is not surprised that Liverpool have looked to strengthen in this particular area. I see their interest in the goalkeeper. I think as much as Jürgen would want it to have been loyal and do the right thing by the goalkeeper. I think ultimately, you know, he has to go and get another one. Simply because if Karius was to make the same mistake or a mistake going forward in a big game, it would all be down to the manager not correcting that situation. It's obvious to everyone. Look what he did in the Champions League final. So the, manager's, the manager, for me, if he's out to get Alisson or, or another top goalkeeper, is, is doing the right thing. Well, uh, here's the context of Alisson's potential £67 million fee. He'd become the world's most expensive goalkeeper, and by some distance, Edison of Manchester City was previously the most expensive after he moved from Benfica for £34.7 million last year. So you're talking over £30 million more than that. Uh, before that, Buffon held the record for many years, being the first goalkeeper to be worth over £30 million when he left Parma to join Juve back in 2001. And that Alisson deal will push Jurgen Klopp's spending past £400 million since he took over as manager there in October 2015. In the context of their top six rivals, it means they've had the third highest spend of anyone just behind Chelsea and they've spent more than double that of Tottenham. And look, as you'd expect, this potential world record deal has got you on your phones, your tablets, your laptops to find out a little bit more about the Brazilian. In fact, these are the top questions on Google in the UK on the subject in the last 24. And we're going to be your Google search. We'll answer a few of them for you. So top of the list, you can see the here. How good is Alisson? That's the question. Well, we'll have to wait to see, I guess. But the former Roma goalkeeping coach, Roberto Negrosolo, called him the Lionel Messi 
of goalkeepers. So interesting thoughts from him. Uh, second, how old is Alison Becker? Well, he's 25. He was born on the same day as Mahatma Gandhi, so he's in good uh, uh, company there. And his potential new club mate as well, Roberto Firmino as well. Now, third, a little more simple. Who is he? Well, we can tell you who he isn't, and that's the Alison Becker on Twitter, who had a bit of fun yesterday by announcing she'd joined Liverpool. That got over 45,000 likes, although some Liverpool fans may have felt a little bit disappointed when that popped up on their timeline. Uh, four, how much did Roma pay for Alisson? Well, he cost them just £6.6 .6 million from Internacional, but he was behind Wojciech Chesney in the pecking order when he joined in 2016. Finally, how tall is Alisson Becker? We can answer that one for you as well. He's six foot four, which is taller than Loris Karras. I'm not sure why I'm doing that for you, but I am. And the same as Simon Minile. There we are. So, here's a look at how the summer business could change Liverpool's starting 11. Alisson could start behind last season's back four, uh, which includes, of course, the world's most expensive defender, Virgil van Dijk. But he had change in midfield then with the new signings Fabinho and Naby Keita, uh, likely to join captain Jordan Henderson. Their front three shouldn't change, but Jordan Shaqiri has added depth. Yeah, plenty more going on in the world of transfers. We're going to start with uh, with this man, Eden Hazard, if we can get him to uh, to animate. Yeah, we can. It's happened. We're told anyway that Real Madrid are keen on Hazard. Our Spanish football expert, Guillaume Balaguer, says Madrid won't lodge a formal offer until Chelsea change their mind and allow the Belgian to leave. New Chelsea head coach Maurizio Sarri was speaking to the media for the first time today. And he'll be reluctant to let Hazard go with the new season just three weeks away. So what did he have to say on this one? Hazard is a very high-level player, and I think he's one of the top two or three European players. So I hope that I will manage to improve him. Clearly the players you're referring to are very high-level players, and I would like to keep them in my squad. But a telephone call without looking them in the eye wouldn't give me any certainties. I would like to meet these players face to face, and talk to them, and understand what the best thing to do will be for everyone. Clearly we would always like to keep all the strongest players. This is what any manager wants to do. This is what any club wants to do. But then we will have to see how the transfer markets will go over the next few days. OK, plenty more uh, from Surrey in a moment. Uh, let's stick with Chelsea, though, for now. CSK Moscow President Evgeny Giner has been speaking about the future of this man, Alexander Golovan. Our colleagues in Italy claim a deal with Chelsea is close. Monaco had made a bid as well. The Russian is a player. Maurizio Sarri tried to sign when he was in charge of Napoli. And speaking to Sport 24, this is what their president had to say. In order not to ruin Golovan, we must let him go. But we have no solution for today. He went on to say there was no definite, definite rather arrangement with Chelsea, but the player could move within two days. Sarri, meanwhile, confirmed he wants a central midfielder. I cannot name any names because I don't know who these players are. I spoke with a football club and said ideally I think that a pinch of quality is lacking in our centre of midfield for a certain type of play. Otherwise they are at a very high level. So we're going to stay with Chelsea, perhaps going back to the future there, because if the man we mentioned earlier, Thibaut Courtois, moves on, we understand Chelsea will re will resign or consider resigning their former player, Petr Cech, from Arsenal. Remember, he made 333 Premier League appearances for Chelsea during an 11-year stay at Stamford Bridge. Let's get back to the homepage, though, because he's not their only option in that position. Sky Source is indeed telling us that Chelsea have an interest in Leicester Leicester's Kasper Schmeichel, the 31-year-old, who just returned from a successful World Cup campaign with Denmark. And changing tack uh, just at the end here of the Skypad, one man we're expecting to be on the move in this window is Aston Villa's Jack Grealish. We understand talks are ongoing over the transfer of the player to Tottenham. And speaking to Sky Sports News earlier this month, Steve Bruce said selling players was inevitable for Villa and that the obvious one was Grealish. We're told he's valued at between 30 and 40 million pounds. So Grealish is a wanted man. He could well get his chance back in the Premier League after impressing in the Championship last season. His stats are very good. This is for the whole of the Championship for midfielders. He was tied fourth for the most uh, assists, five in total among other midfielders. He came in uh, second for the most shots of all Championship midfielders. He created 49 chances, so he comes in at uh, rank sixth on the list. But in terms of chances created from open play, 
Nobody did it better than Grealish. 45 chances last season. He also topped the rankings for fouls once. So he draws the fouls. He's tricky to uh, get hold of. And uh, he was second in terms of completing dribbles as well. 83 in total. The former Villa midfielder George Boateng certainly thinks he'd be a good fit for Spurs. The talent is there. He can play. He's a good player and uh, still developing. And I think Tottenham would be a good place for Jack if materialised to play his football because they're a footballing team. Jack's got skills, he's got a lot of qualities to beat the player and he's got an eye for goal. I do understand, however, that he's not a proven Premier League player. So the price tag of 30, 40 million can be a lot depending on how Jack Grealish develops his game. So Grealish could be on the move in a deal worth up to £40 million and that would make him the most expensive player ever. That's the highest fee ever paid for a championship player. £10 million more than Everson paid for England goalkeeper Jordan Pickford last summer. Tottenham also paid £30 million when they signed Musa Sissoko from Newcastle on deadline day two years ago. OK, let's keep it Tottenham just for now and a player of considerable repute who didn't actually feature much after Christmas last season. Could we see developments then on the future of this man, Toby Alderweireld, now that the World Cup is over? He said yesterday that the fact he didn't play in the run-up to the tournament was, in his words, unjustified. He went on to say this, I really know nothing in my head. I'm going back to Tottenham. We'll see. Big this summer as they look to consolidate themselves back in the Premier League next. We're going to be hearing from one of the eight summer signings who played at the World Cup.
Welcome back to Transfer Centre. A reminder of our top story. Sky in Italy understand Liverpool have completed a £67 million move for the Roma goalkeeper Alisson, subject to a medical. Uh, we understand Alisson has agreed a five-year contract and the deal makes him the world's most expensive goalkeeper ever. Yes, yeah, so when the move is complete, his move to Liverpool will break the previous record set by his fellow Brazilian Edison, who enjoyed that title-winning season with Manchester City in his first season in English football. But if we compare the two last season, how do their league stats uh, stack up? Edison, firstly, conceded 26 goals for City, two fewer than uh, Alisson. But you should note there that Alisson faced 53 more shots and he had a higher uh, save rate than his fellow countrymen. Alisson also kept more clean sheets and he didn't make a single error leading to a goal. Edison, on the other hand, well, he did make two errors that led to goals. Now, the other big talking point today, Chelsea's new head coach, Maurizio Sarri, has been speaking to the media today for the first time since he got the job. We heard from him on Eden Hazard and Thibaut Courtois' futures. He's also clarified his position on transfer dealings within the club, revealing he's bored with the transfer market. <laughs> I want to clarify, I feel much more a pitch manager than a general manager. I think that I am one of the few managers that is bored by the transfer market. I don't want to talk about it, and I'm not that interested in it. Our task is growing the players that we have. OK, so that's Chelsea boxed off, uh, at least for the time being, although I'm sure there'll be more from them throughout the window the next three weeks or so. Let's head to Vicarage Road, a player who performed very well uh, consistently for them under two different managers last season. There remains an interest from Everton, no surprise there, in Watford's Richarlison. The big question is, will Everton and Watford be able to do business following the bad feeling over Everton's pursuit of their manager, Silva, at the time when he was Watford manager last season? We're told Everton's priorities remain a centre-back, a left-back and a winger. Don't forget, Richarlison can operate as a winger as well. In the meantime, we're going to go to Burnley, a player who was on the move uh, last summer. It looks like he could be got on the move for slightly less money this time around, but negotiations are continuing between Burnley and Swansea for midfielder Sam Klukas. However, we've received conflicting information on whether an official bid for the player has been made. Sky Sports News has been told Burnley offered around £8 million for Klukas. However, another source has told us that no bid has yet been made. Let's go up to uh, Manchester City and a player who figured just uh, towards the end of last season pretty much when the title was uh, was sealed for uh, the club at the Etihad and we understand that Alexander Zinchenko is expected to leave Manchester City this summer That's despite travelling to the US as part of their pre-season tour the fullback played eight Premier League games as I said for Pep Guardiola's side last season, earning him a winner's medal, of course. Earlier this month, we told you Wolves had made a £16 million uh, offer. Now, it looks like uh, Bournemouth are breaking tradition down there on the south coast because it looks like they're going to be going for, um, for a player from overseas instead of the, their, their British interest. And there were talks uh, with Levante over the signing of midfielder Jefferson Lerma. That's according to Sky Sources. We're told the discussions over a £17 million deal have been positive and there's still some work to do as Lerma would require a work permit, but personal terms are all fine. Lerma was, of course, part of Colombia's uh, World Cup squad. Uh, let's keep it Bournemouth for now. As I said, they're looking to branch out and sign a few players from outside uh, the British Isles, and they're still negotiating with La Liga side Leganes over the transfer of left-back Diego Rico. The Spanish club's valuation of their player remains somewhat higher than what Bournemouth are prepared to pay, and we understand they're considering other positions, sorry, other options rather, in that position, including Genoa's Diego Laxalt, who started for Uruguay at the World Cup. Let's get to uh, one of the newcomers. Of course, Bournemouth were in that position three years ago themselves, but Fulham are coming back after a four-year absence from the Premier League, going up at Wembley, of course, memorably last May. And Sky Sources are telling us that they want to sign Kevin and Babu, but they face competition from Basel for the young boys right back. They're yet to make a formal bid. We also understand young boys have rejected a £7 million bid from Basel for the defender, but value him at around £10 million. Of course, plenty of money as well being spent in the championship. Let's head up to uh, the northwest or the Midlands, depending on where you uh, stand and where exactly Stoke City is geographically. But um, they're looking to get back to uh, the Premier League after a 10-year absence. And Napoli have rejected a bid in the region of £13 million from Stoke for former defender Vlad Kirikes. Remember, the Romanian was brought to White Hart Lane in the summer of 2013 with some of the proceeds from the sale of Gareth Bale. But that may not 
be where their business is done. In fact, I'm pressing the wrong button. If I go to the left, I'll be able to tell you just a little bit more about him, actually. Sky Swords understand that Stoke are interested in signing Huddersfield's Tom Ince. We understand Ince, who played under Stoke boss Gary Rowett at Derby two seasons ago, remains with the Huddersfield squad in Frankfurt for pre-season. Stoke are also interested in Newcastle's Matt Ritchie, but are unlikely to go for both players. This could have a knock-on effect, because if they decide against Ritchie, that would have implications for Newcastle's pursuit of Andros Townsend at Crystal Palace. So, the window in full swing then, but who has been the busiest so far? Well, that is one of the new boys, and it's Wolves, who've done eight deals while Brighton have strengthened significantly. They've made seven signings. Uh, Manuel Pellegrini started his reign at West Ham with seven as well. We're going to be hearing from one of them, Jack Wilshire, in just a moment. Now, Una Emery has also done five deals, as you see there, for Arsenal so far this summer. Only three clubs are yet to register, as you see down right down here, yet to register any summer signings. So... Wolves the busiest, and now they've added Euro 2016 winning goalkeeper Rui Patricio. He says his relationship with Nuno Espirito Santo wasn't the only reason he decided to join the club. O Nuno foi foi sem dúvida uma peça uh, fundamental também para vir porque uh, já já o já o conheço uh, há alguns anos e sem dúvida que que foi também um, um dos motivos fortes para vir também pelo projeto que também que o Golfo também uh, tem e, e foi sem dúvida uh, uma uma grande ajuda também para para vir uh, e ter a oportunidade também de, de, de jogar aqui. So, as we said a few moments ago, Jack Wilshire is one of seven major signings that West Ham have made this summer. But why did he decide to move to the London Stadium when he had other offers? The manager. The, the, the players they already had, obviously they've brought in a few more players which are going to strengthen the squad, but you know, it's important that we, we have a, a strong squad, not just a strong team, a strong squad. You know, everyone knows how difficult the Premier League is around November, December time when it gets really busy, you're going to need everyone. So you know, we're, we're all excited, we're working hard and you know, all eyes at the moment are on our first game uh, Liverpool away, but we need to, we've got a lot of hard work to do before then and we'll be ready. Looking at the signings, the players who have come in, is Europe a realistic target this season for West Ham, do you think? Uh, well, you know, we, don't, we don't want to put any, any limits on our season. You know, as you said, we've got some good players coming, some top players who have played in, in Europe's top leagues at top clubs. So, you know, I know from, from a personal point of view, I want to be playing in Europe. And from, from the players they brought in and the players that are there, they want a, a better season than they did last year. So, I think it's important that we take each day as it comes, each game as it comes, and, and we, we build up from there. Now, Middlesbrough defender Fabio da Silva has signed a three-year deal with Ligue 1 side FC Nantes. The Brazilian international made 54 appearances for Middlesbrough, during which he scored twice. He'll wear the number two shirt there. And some news just reaching us here. Jamie Mackey has joined Oxford on a two-year deal. He was released by QPR at the end of the season. Usain Bolt wants to become a professional footballer in Australia, but the country's FA haven't exactly been gushing in welcoming the fastest man on the planet. Bolt's agreed a six-week trial with Central Coast Mariners with a view to earning a contract. However, Football Federation Australia would have to top up the former athlete's wages from its marquee player fund. The Mariners have offered to pay 70% of Bolt's salary, but it's thought the FFA would still have to stump up around half a million pounds. <clears throat> and in a statement, this is what they said. While Usain Bolt is one of the most famous athletes on the planet, he is not a professional footballer. If the trial goes ahead and Central Coast Mariners decide that it stacks up and they want to offer him a contract, then we will have a discussion with them around that and what might be possible. <clears throat> Uh, make sure you watch the next Transfer Centre. That's coming your way at 7 this evening here on Sky Sports News. Yes, so join us again for that. But next, here on Sky Sports News, a new era begins at Chelsea's. Maurizio Sarri wants to bring the fun to Stamford Bridge.